OK, so we've completed our survey for the day, we've gone back home, and now we want to be able to get the data from the Nomad unit onto our computer so that we can work with it in a GIS. So the first thing that we uh, need to know is that in order to connect to the Nomad, or in fact the Juno, to the computer, you'll need to have Windows Mobile Device Center or Windows Active Sync installed, as essentially your computer needs to treat these as Windows phones. So, in this case we've got Windows Mobile Device Center installed. When it opens up, uh, what you need to do is you need to connect the Nomad to your computer using a micro USB to USB uh, cable, which is uh, provided with the Nomads, and then turn on the Nomad. Then in Windows Mobile Device Center you should see an option that says connect without setting up your device. And once you've clicked that, there's been a connection made between your mobile device and the computer, and you can start. So, the software that we need to use in order to take the data from the rover, or the base, or from a Juno, is GPS Pathfinder Office. And in terms of importing the data, to then work with it later and, and do differential corrections, the procedure is the same for all of them. Now, one thing to note is that although the Juno is uh, a handheld unit, much less accurate than the differential GPS, if you or a colleague has been using a Juno in the same area as you have been collecting base data, you can post-correct your Juno data to a higher level of accuracy in the same way as you do with the rover. You won't achieve centimetre accuracy, but you may be able to achieve around 2.5 to 3 metres horizontal accuracy and a little bit more than that in terms of the vertical accuracy. So you can prove the accuracy of your Juno by using it in the, uh, the same location and at the same time you're collecting base data. And so the post-correction that I'm going to demonstrate using a rover file equally applies to Juno data. You will need to alter the Juno settings if you're going to do that, and you can look in the Juno manual and in the user guide for the systems in order to find out more about that. So, once we've got a connection between the devices, we need to just select Data Transfer. Now, this can be found on the side menu of GPS Pathfinder Office as one of several convenient shortcuts, or in the Utilities menu. And when you've selected that, the data transfer window will open. Now, here you've got two options, or rather two tabs, receive and send. And if you've successfully connected to your device, there should be a green tick adjacent to this cable on the top of the menu, and it should state that it's connected. So, in this case, we want to leave the tab set to receive, as we want to receive files from the Nomad onto the computer. So we click on the add button, and select data file. So this is actually the rover unit and the GPS Pathfinder Office software is very uh, very helpful in that it will keep track of the files that you have downloaded since they were last worked upon. So every day it will highlight the files that haven't been downloaded yet that have new data in them. So you can straight away find the files that you need to download. Now in this case we have our survey data for the day as this is the rover unit and this was collecting data and uh, throughout the day once we'd set up the base. So we just select open. You'll see the data file listed there and then all we need to do is click transfer all. You'll see a progress window and it's now transferred the data to GPS Pathfinder Office and your data will go to the GNSS projects folder. If, when you first open Pathfinder Office you'll be asked to set up a project you should do this. This is going to perform a convenient location that can hold all of your survey data and then when you have set up a project any importing, exporting or correction corrections that you make to any of the data within that project will all be stored in one folder in the umbrella folder that is GNSS projects which will be stored in your My Documents. So this has sent the data to the folder for my uh, survey project and now I have that data from the rover. It's exactly the same procedure to do to transfer data from the base, or as I said, from the Juno. So, I previously downloaded the data from the base file, so we can now look at correcting it. So, and if we wanted to first just have a look at our data, we do have the option in view of selecting map, and you can select a data file, in this case the one that we collected today, to see the survey data that you've collected. And by using the zoom and pan icons at the top, you can navigate around this, this rudimentary map. And you can uh, use the inquiry icons to find out more information about your features. You can click on them and get properties, for example. 
So we can see that we have our data in there. This is currently uncorrected data. So we need to use the base data to correct this to improve its positional accuracy. So for example, the point that we choose here, the, uh, it has a series of attributes, and the 68% precision of this particular point is 6.1 meters horizontal and 9.9 .9 meters vertical, which isn't a particularly good accuracy. That's what we want to improve. So, we then select differential correction, which is a bullseye uh, icon on the same sidebar as the previous option. This will open another window, and I'll ask you to select the SSF file, that's the, tr the um, Trimble proprietary format which all of the data files are saved in. This is the reason that we need to go through Pathfinder Office, because you won't be able to import your data directly into a GIS without first taking it through Pathfinder Office. So all of your data needs to go through this software. So we select our file, uh, in this case it's done it for us because it was the last file opened, but you can use the plus icon to select a file elsewhere. Once you've done that, click Next, and it will ask you the processing type. We can just leave this on Automatic Carrier and Code Processing, which is the recommended setting. It then uh, has a series of options here, so it will output only corrected positions for the file. That's what we want, so we only get the positions that have, been, uh, have had their accuracy improved. We do, of course, have the original data as a separate file anyway, so we can see any files that it doesn't. Uh, and it will it has various other options, most of which don't actually apply to the name idea. Here. So we then have a differential correction wizard window where it gives us several options, base provider search, folder search, or browse. So you can have it set to simply look in a folder, so you can have a base folder and simply add your data in there every day. Uh, you, base provider is when you're actually using an external um, source to correct your data. For example, information from a ground station in the locality where you're working, uh, or other other options like that, so there are several several options. However, in this case, we're simply using data from our own base receiver. So we need to browse to find that file. However, again, this has uh, updated. Uh, in fact, that is a previous file, so I'll just scroll through and find the appropriate base file. So, by naming the base file with the site and with the date, I've been able to find the correct base file. Leave uh, reference position to use reference position from base files, and we click next. So it'll then ask you where it wants you to have, where the, you wish to have the data outported into the project folder, uh, or into the same folder as the input file. So we'll use the project folder. It asks you whether you want to use the original file name, overwriting any existing corrected files for that, or create a new file name based on the input. Um, we can just leave this as creating a unique file name and use the project folder. So then we click start and the window will then start to fill up with information and this is the system starting to correct the data. It will tell you how far it is through computing the solutions, it will tell you what kind of uh, coverage it's achieved and it will tell you how many, eventually when it's finished this processing, how many positions it's corrected and also will give you statistics for the accuracy that's been achieved by the data. So it's just uh, correcting the files here. So in this case, the uh, of my data, 0.36% after processing is in the range of 30 to 50 centimeter accuracy. This is the, the estimated accuracy, we can check it later in the GIS. Uh, however, 99.64% of the data has been corrected to an accuracy better than five centimeters. Once you've done this, the differential correction wizard uh, is complete, and you just have to click close. The file will have been saved using, uh, if you haven't told it any other file name, the same file name as your original data, but with a .core postfix.